There we go. Right. What's up? How you doing? Oh, man. I feel like, you know, when you try to FaceTime your dad. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know how to turn this thing on. Oh, that, that was pretty smooth. Oh, That's yeah. You might want to my... turn the phone. All right. What am I? You want when I turn it the vertical? I told you. Yeah. Okay. I'm just like, you yeah, I told you. I'm just like your dad trying to FaceTime. Because <laughs> I am. So is, it, is it? Oh, oh, wow. No, we shouldn't discuss it here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's everything, Brian? How are you doing? Oh, it's good. Just running around. Just, I'm kind of like trying to switch modes. I just came from my hospital job. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Screw it. I'm just going to hold this thing. Because it's all, it's acting all funky. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, I, 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 right? New York. yeah, I know. So I already see that you're wearing the, the right t-shirt. Yeah, so, I literally, um, I literally went to my pile of new t-shirts, you know, the ones that we sell, They're like yeah. the only way I can actually make $5, like <laughs> right now. Uh, and uh, like, realized I didn't have any clean shirts. So I just went and got the critical stuff taken care of, mm -hmm. grab shirt, grab beer. But beer, right? Evening. Yeah. It's good. You know, we can't I'm ready to go. Yeah. So for the people who doesn't know, Brian is running a school, a motorcycle school, and it's actually a super moto school. So Brian, can you tell, explain to people what actually super moto is? Because not everybody is aware about it. Yeah, I mean, I, the easiest description would be um, super moto is a form of racing where the track is 80% asphalt, 20% dirt. So if you're on a motorcycle that is set up to race, 80% asphalt, 20% dirt, you're riding supermoto. Um, so many people will focus, generally speaking, there'll be 450cc uh, dirt bikes with 17 inch wheels. Um, and that's a whole nother, you know, controversy, what makes a bike a uh, supermoto bike. But in short, if it's set up to mostly ride on asphalt and can jump, um, it's pretty much a supermoto bike. Um, and so, yeah, most of the time you'll have people that are ride, they'll take their supermoto bikes to a cart track and they'll, um, they'll do asphalt only. Maybe they don't have dirt available to them. Um, or maybe uh, you'll see people riding in the canyons. They make fantastic street bikes. Basically, a supermoto is better than every other bike everywhere except the freeway where it sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, beyond that, they're just, they're lightweight. They're extremely fun to ride. Um, and, you know, you can get everything from a, you know, $15,000 turnkey Husky race bike to mm -hmm. putting, you know, $90 worth of dual sport-ish tires or street-ish tires on a stock DR650 for $1,600 total. And you could take both those bikes to the racetrack. You could take, um, ride both those around town. And uh, yeah, that's a bit rambly of an answer. But the bottom line is if it's designed to go on asphalt and dirt with kind of a bias towards asphalt mm -hmm. um, and it's insanely fun, it's probably a supermoto bike. It is, it is, for sure. What, what brought you into supermoto racing? Um, I started with, I had vintage bikes. I had all like Honda CBs and um, I didn't have Triumphs, but I rode a lot of them and uh, was just kind of into riding vintage bikes, and then I wanted a bike that could actually um, stop and go, and uh, I wanted something with brakes. I was in, living in San Francisco at the time, so I got a VTR 1000, and I test I rode that around. I test rode a buddy's dirt bike. Initially, I didn't really like the dirt, but it floored me. I couldn't understand <laughs> why street bikes weren't like dirt bikes. Why weren't they lightweight? The bike was fast. I mean, it was it was a white the white bike I happened to ride it was a YZ 250. <laughs> But I rode a YZ250, and it was insanely fun. I didn't really have anywhere to ride dirt, but I wanted to ride a dirt bike and kind of put two and two together that way. And, um, and that was probably around 1998, 1999. And that's when I started shopping for a, a supermoto bike. All right, all right. And then after a while, you just started a school. How, how did that happen? Yeah, so I started, um, that's kind of a, well, I'll try to make it relatively quick. I. I had my supermoto bike which i liked riding a lot and then people needed to take the dmv test and so i started loaning out my personal bike just as a favor um, to people to take the dmv test and then there was enough people that i started that as a business i had a the dmv test bike I had a little tw200 that i would loan out to people um and those people a lot of them were great a lot of them were horrible um riders so i started offering private training in parking lots 
And then I could do a couple sessions in a parking lot. And I realized if I really wanted to train people, I wanted to get them to where it was safer and I could go over a lot more, which is the racetrack. So I started SoCal Supermoto, honestly, as a means of paying for my track days. I had two young kids at the time. I didn't have any money and I wanted to keep riding motorcycles. And it's hard when you have two young kids to justify to the family the cost and risk of riding. Um, and that was the way I did it. I just kind of made a a little mini job out of it. So I started off with a TW200 and two uh, DRZ400 Supermotos. And I started taking classes of four or five out to the racetrack. And it really just grew from there. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes earlier on. I wish I had gotten more bikes from the start. And, um, but uh, it just kind of just kept going and going and going, just kind of kept adding to the fleet, adding to the staff, adding to the dates on the calendar. Um, and we went from maybe doing two days a month with four riders each day to, you know, about a thousand students uh, a year at SoCal Sumoto. And it's, we're now, I think we're the behind, we're probably one of the largest schools behind California Superbike School. But what's really cool is it's still just me and my friends and clients, which are our friends. So um, we've always run the school more like a club where half the priority is on making people better riders and the other half is on riding around and just having a really good time. So that's actually kind of designed into our um, kind of our business model and our, our mission statement is just to make sure that everybody's having a really good time and learning stuff. And um, so we, that was in 2010 and mm -hmm. uh, we just keep plugging away and keep doing the school. If somebody haven't attended at the school, uh, can you can you run them through what happened during the day? Yeah, totally. Um, so we meet at uh, basically we meet at eight fifteen. Everybody checks in. You sign your life away on the release form, and <laughs> um, and then we go over kind of a basic introduction to riding supermoto, um, and then we do a um, like kind of the safety talk, track etiquette, kind of an overview of how the day is going to go. Um, and then I'll lead them out. So everybody mm -hmm. will follow me. We'll do a big, big lead follow. And that's always kind of the joke for, we have a homework assignment every single time you go out on the track, we might mm -hmm. be working on trail breaking or fast transitions or three point turning or any of these kind of teaching points that we'll go through, through the day. And the whole purpose of the first time out and put it on the board is to ride around. Don't crash. That's literally it for the first session. And usually we have like 95% of people can follow that instruction. And, uh, but it's just to get some heat in the tires, just to get a feel for the track. And then um, we'll do 15 minutes on, probably 20 to 30 minutes off, rotating with the go-karts and maybe a faster bike group. Um, every, once everybody's looking good on the asphalt, then we open up the, uh, the dirt section, get everybody riding in the dirt. Um, we'll end the day with a couple of, a uh, couple of, you know, a little bit of time for free riding and, and just, um, that's pretty much, oh, give everybody a t-shirt or a hat or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it for the, uh, for the flow of the day. Do you have to be a racer to attend the school? Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, that's probably what is one of the things that really kind of separates us from a lot of schools. We're not focused on racing. We have everybody from pro racers to people that have been riding a couple months come out and do the school. What's really interesting is that when somebody's new to supermoto, um, I've given the exact same, we had like Chaz Davies hanging out with us one day and I was giving him the same instruction that, you know, kind of the standard mistakes that people make when they're newer to supermoto, even though he's with all the mistakes, he's blatantly faster than me. But, um, you know, so we have all different levels and for whatever reason it completely works. So as mm -hmm. long as you're competent on a motorcycle, you can go through the gears, you feel comfortable, turn left, turn right, use the brakes. Um, we can get you out on the supermoto track and you'll generally speaking, you'll learn way more in one day at the supermoto track than you will in years of riding on the street. And it's just fun. Talk me, tell, tell me about the fleet. What kind of bikes do you have? Yeah, we have all DRZ for they're all DRZ 400 supermotos, except when they're not. Um, we have a couple of uh, um, TTR uh, 125s as well. Um, so sorry, I'm trying to get in a, my nose just started crazy itching. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think we're up to 26 bikes, most mm -hmm. of which are um, the uh, the DRZs. 
um, the DRZs, and then, uh, and like I said, the TTR125 supermotos. The TTRs, most of them have 12-inch tires and TT91 um, rubber from Dunlop. And then the DRZs are mostly stock. Um, we kind of go over our standard mods with them um, or in things that we do to make them a little bit more track-friendly, um, mm -hmm. safer, more fun. And, uh, but for the most part, they're mostly stock bikes. And again, that's kind of the advantage of Supermoto is it's going to come down to the rider, not necessarily the bike. So um, for where most people are at, the DRZ is uh, an ideal learning tool. They're really fun to ride. They're very easy to ride. Um, they're not too expensive. They're reliable. Um, you can go moderately fast around a track with them. Um, so they, they've been, uh, I've always said that that's the reason that I'm still in business after, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. Yeah. Um, my personal DRZ, it's had a couple top ends and one bottom end, but it's got about 130,000 miles estimated wow. on it. So it's, uh, it's hammered. Um, but yeah, most of them, uh, and then we'll, we'll buy kind of a DRZ once every couple of months to keep the fleet nice and fresh. And um, that's, that's what we're running out there. All right. I think a common question is that you hear a lot. What is faster? Is it knee down or foot out? Yeah. So there's a couple different answers for this. I'll give you the, the super quick answer. Um, <laughs> fast corner, fast track, knee down um, is generally going to be faster. Um, most people in Supermoto, we teach foot out because most people are faster foot out. Mm -hmm. It's a chance to try something new for most riders. And it's very, it's good prep for the dirt section. So you have a picture of like Dylan code up right there right now. And it just reminded mm -hmm. me of a funny picture where I was going knee down and Dylan code from the Superbike school was going foot out. We were like following each other through some turns, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why we teach foot out. Um, like I said, most riders are faster foot out. And, you know, basically when it comes down to it, when you look at a tighter track, um, if you look at a corner, you got, you know, basically uh, breaking for the corner, turning in, taking the corner, exiting the corner, setting up for the next corner. And only one of those five points is it going to be faster going knee down, um, where basically getting in and out of the corners will be a lot faster going foot out. Now, that's the kind of quick technical answer to it. Mm -hmm. And the, the really quick answer, which might be unpopular, but um, who cares? I mean, that's, that's really my <laughs> spot. Motorcycles are toys. They're, most of us are not doing this to get a paycheck. And um, people can be ridiculously fast going foot out. People are ridiculously fast going knee down. So unless you're doing this for a paycheck, which is a tiny percentage of people, um, mm -hmm. just do what you enjoy whatever you enjoy doing more. Um, that's, that's the quick, uh, quick answer. And then the other thing that, you know, really kind of the, another point that comes up on this is people will say, well, the faster riders go foot out. So therefore fast, you know, foot out is the, uh, is the right answer. Um, what I would point out is the fastest riders in MotoGP do the leg dangle on the brakes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make the average Canyon racer faster if he does a leg dangle. So <laughs> Um, you can't answer by what the fastest riders do, what the pros do, because you're not pro. I mean, let's just call it what it is. In reality, the way that you feel the most comfortable on the motorcycles, the way that you're going to be the fastest. And then to side of that, um, even if you are slower, but you enjoy it more, um, there's nothing inherently wrong with either style of riding. So just do what, to, do what you enjoy more. Uh, mm -hmm. Me, I, <laughs> I shake it up corner by corner based on my mood sometimes i'll go knee down sometimes i go foot out sometimes i go most of the time now i go completely lazy old man neutral where i'm not really doing either or i'm just kind of up and down on the bike and All riding right. around having a good time what uh usually comes to my mind when i think about supermoto is back it in mm -hmm. so can you explain what that actually is why people are doing that and how they can do it sure um most people are doing it to copy faster riders and they're slowing themselves down in the process. <laughs> that's, that's the honest answer. Um, yeah. So backing it in is you'll see supermoto riders as they come in fast into a corner, the, the back end of the bike will start to drift out, which kind of mm -hmm. makes kind of sharpening up the corner and tightening up the corner allows for very late braking. Um, when done right, which you can always tell when somebody's doing it right because the, the rear end will come out 
and it won't correct back. That's how you know when somebody's really um, backing it in right. Now go to your local cart track and 90% of people backing it in, myself included, will probably be doing it wrong. Um, and so the biggest question that I get, or one of the most common questions is how do you back it in? And I always say that the instructions on how to back it in and how to high side are identical. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, basically if you want to back it in, ride faster. The, I mean, that's the easiest answer. If you are riding fast, you're braking hard, you're turning in hard, you're making your turning point, you're making your apex, you'll find that you will naturally start to, to back, in the, uh, back in the bike um, because you're unloading so much weight off the rear at the same time that you're turning the bike in. The bike will, bike will just naturally kind of drift out um, on you as you go into the turn. Um, so that's the, that's the proper answer of how to back it in is, is ride, ride better, ride harder, ride faster, <laughs> and you will automatically back it in. Um, that said, so many people you'll see intentionally backing it in using the rear brake. And generally speaking, they're messing up their corner entry speed. Um, they're uh, braking slower than if they would just simply brake in a straight line. Um, mm -hmm. But they're having fun. And so it's hard for me to, <laughs> it's hard for me to tell them not to do it. Um, so the bottom line is if you're safe and you're having a good time on a motorcycle, you know, yeah. go for it, but just go for it with the understanding yeah. that you're not necessarily doing it right because you're looking like, you know, Bonda Bush or whatever, whatever pro you're thinking of. Um, just, uh, that's the, that's the bottom line when it comes to, when it comes to backing it in. You have one of the most famous school in the US, motorcycle school. What do you think makes you different to other schools? Wow, thanks. Um, it's so <laughs> weird. I never, I never see us, right? Like I'm just, we're, we're in our little pocket. I don't feel involved with the motorcycle industry in any way, except mm -hmm. our amazing sponsor from Dunlop. Thanks Dunlop. Um, but uh Honestly, we just are a bunch of friends that go to the racetrack, offer up our services, try to make people better riders. And so um, I don't really, I don't really see how other people see us. I just know that we're extremely thankful that people keep coming out and keep signing up. And most of our classes sell out um, and uh, our marketing budget is um, zero. And uh, <laughs> most of our classes fill up and we're, just we're very aware that that's because of you guys um, supporting the school and coming out and coming back out and bringing your friends and sharing and, and all that. It's very clear to us. So um, what's our secret to is just the same as any other business, treat people right. And um, I, I think if there's something that it makes us different is that um, I come from skateboarding mm -hmm. and Skateboarding, the focus is on community and having a good time and growing uh, individually, not as necessarily competitive like you would get in a lot of other um, aspects of, of motorcycle um, riding and track schools. And we use motorcycles to do it. And that's, that's our that's our key is just making sure at the end of the day, if everybody has fun, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be a success. Okay. And um, I had one of our early students turn instructor, turn pro. And then I don't know what he's doing now, but Tim Weeks said when I was stressing about a bunch of stuff one day and he said, see those five riders, um, as long as they're having fun, that's, that's the only thing that matters. And I've kind of held on to that. And so when I get stressed out about all the different things, because running a business is running a business, it's a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of the day, I just try to focus on making sure everybody's having fun. And if that happens, then we will be a success. It's, it's that simple. Okay, cool. So if people are interested to book classes with you, where, where can the people find more information about the school? Oh, it's just, everything's at SoCalSoupMoto.com. So uh, it's S-O-C-A-L, so for Southern California, SoCalSuperMoto.com. Here's the logo. <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, and then, of course, Instagram, uh, Facebook. And then we're going to be expanding our YouTube channel so we could be famous like you with a big fancy YouTube. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I saw that you're doing vlogs now, right? Yeah, we're going to start doing some vlogs. And, um, but, you know, we we're just kind of shaking out the bugs with the first couple. And we have some, uh, just a bunch of topics. We want to do kind of the next five most common mistakes because that was kind of a video that got a lot of hits the first time. And I, there's a couple that major mistakes that everybody kind of does that we didn't get to touch on yet. Um, I want to do a stock versus modded DRZ shootout on the track. Um, <laughs> Because I have this pet theory that everybody who mods their bike is making themselves slower. Not everybody, a lot of people. Um, so I just kind of want to test that theory with both the uh, fast riders and kind of newer newer riders, and just a whole bunch of stuff we want to go over. But right now, yeah, basically all the usual all the usual places: SoCalSuperMoto.com, YouTube, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. Are you guys still open? Like no classes. <laughs> no, not at all. So yeah. yeah, we're we're very closed and just kind of uh it's kind of it's kind of weird because I'm I'm kind of in both worlds. I work in the hospital and mm. treating covid patients and that sort of thing and then um and then just kind of waiting it out and uh just you know, basically just doing the social responsibility thing, just waiting for everything to chill out and then uh and then we'll just be ready to go. So we actually went out to the track with a tiny group last weekend or the weekend before and um, just to make sure we could run the bikes and so put fresh batteries in the bikes that needed it and made sure to run all the bikes and just made sure everything's good to go so that when all the um, restrictions get lifted and everybody's healthy and we can get out there and and start ripping around the uh ripping around the track again all right yeah hopefully yeah. i can only uh say the the school i've been there twice or three times already and it's outstanding so for everyone oh thanks to try to do it Please go there. It's uh, it's awesome. Everybody is saying the same. If you talk to people who visit the school, everybody is saying just good things. That being said, Ryan, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for having me. Questions, and uh, I hope everything goes so back to normal soon, and then we can uh, see us on the racetrack again soon. Well, yeah, I have a question for you. When are you going? When are you going to bring your people back out? You guys were it was super fun having you guys out. Are we coming back? We already have, um, we have a booked and uh, we changed that as a credit right now. And as oh, yeah. you okay. you're, you're one of my groups. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we coming yeah back. that yeah, was yeah. insane. We had probably like just what was really cool. And I'll take this opportunity. I know you got to go. Just want to say thank you to so many people. Um, we know people are hurting for cash. There's a lot of people that including us. Right. And so, yeah. yeah we uh we just said hey if you can if you can take a credit if you need a refund we'll give you a refund if you can take a credit that'd be great and so many people just said hey man we'll take a credit we'll, we'll see you when right. so thank you to to everybody who kind of helped keep us afloat um that way but um yeah um, we look forward to having you guys out you just just you know how to get a hold of me just drop a line with when you have a date picked out and i'll mark up the spots okay. for you yeah see you over there right all right have thanks, a nice thanks, Johnny. Weekend. all right thank you, you so too much. take care Take care. Bye-bye. See ya.